Hey guys, I'm Jim. Thanks for coming back. And this is episode number six in my Luminar AI Getting Started tutorial series. We've covered a lot of things, the user interface, the catalog, templates, and all that. Now we're going to get into editing. I'm in the Edit tab today, and I'm going to start with the first option there, which is the Essentials component of the Edit tab. Let me show you a photo. Here we go. Uh, as you can see, I'm on Edit in the upper menu, and then on the right-hand side, I'm in Essentials. The next three videos will cover creative, portrait, and professional, but today we're going to focus on Essentials. And while the name makes a lot of sense for this tab, Essentials, these are essential tools. In some regard, it almost makes it sound a little bit like they're basic, but they're not basic at all. There's some amazing, powerful tools here. And in honesty, I spend more time editing my photos using the Essentials tools than I do anything else. They're very powerful. There's a lot of flexibility. I'm going to go through all of these, give a quick demo of how they work, but for the purposes of just saving us all some sanity and, of course, keeping this video from being too long, I'm not going to do deep dives on every aspect of every tool. We'll just have to come back and cover more of these things in depth in what I call deep dive videos. But let's go ahead and get started. Now, one of the new things in terms of how Luminar AI is set up compared to previous Luminar versions like Luminar 4 is that Composition AI, which is a new tool, but the ability to crop, rotate, and all that, as well as erase, they're built into the Essentials tab, and they are effectively what I call live edits. And personally, I'm a big fan of this because one of the first things I ever do when I get a photo open like this one is straighten it because usually they're crooked. I also like to crop. I'm a big fan of 16 by 9. You don't have to be. I'm not trying to sell you on it, but it's very easy and quick to just come in here and do something. Now, I did a separate video about Composition AI showing you how it works. I'm just going to go ahead in here and choose my 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and I'm going to go ahead and click this button to straighten the photo, and I think that looks good. I actually might straighten it a tiny bit more. I can never tell, but you can use these grid lines to see. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and now my crop photo is ready to edit. Erases the next tool, and as you can see, there are some spots. I'm going to go ahead and erase those by highlighting them with my mouse. And to be honest, this is not a full edit, um, and I've got too many spots to, uh, to remove, so I'm going to use that as an example. I'm going to get a couple more just because they're annoying me. But let's pretend I got them all. I kind of doubt that I did. You just click Erase, and it takes them out. So there we go. I've cropped my photo. I've straightened my photo. I've gotten spots out of it. Here's my new base photo. I am ready to edit. This is where you start jumping into the various tools. I also love the alignment or the flow, I should say. I think it makes sense to get your composition straight and do any erasing, but then going into light, etc. The only time that I go out of order here is if the photo is really dark, I may jump ahead to enhance AI, but in this case, it's not. So you've got a lot of different sections here. Let me close them. And again, Honestly, I could do a deep dive just on the curves component of this tool, so I'm going to uh, skip that. You've got profiles. You've got white balance. I'm going to leave that as shot, and again, I will come back and do a deep dive on this. Profiles, basically, as you can see, as I hover over this, you get a preview, and these are basically digital camera profiles. You can see how they impact the photo. I'm going to leave it at Luminar default. Here you've got the temperature and tint. Maybe I want to change the exposure, maybe bump up the contrast a little bit. Maybe pull down the highlights, it's a little too much of that, and maybe pull up the shadows. And you can see I've got a nice little bit of an edit going here. Let me show you the before and after. You can just slide. It's not massive, but you know it doesn't have to be massive. I'm going to close that. You can get into blacks and whites. Maybe you want to punch up the whites a little bit and pull down the blacks to make it a little bit more contrasty. You can see how that's having an impact on the image. And then you can get into the curves tool, which I said is a video all to itself. I'm going to skip that for now. But if you look at what we've done in the light tool, Here's the before and after. Very powerful, quite a visual difference, which I like quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit reset, and I'm going to show you Enhance AI. Now, this Accent AI is kind of the one slider to rule them all. It is, especially if you're new to photo editing, it is a great way to start because it does so much to your photo. Now, it impacts a lot of aspects. I think the common misperception is that it just impacts the light and brightens a dark photo. And while it does that very well, it also impacts contrast, which, as you can see, impacts how colors will appear. It does a great job of brightening up the dark spots while at the same time not brightening the stuff that's already bright. So it works really well in that regard. But it is very powerful, so just keep that in mind. So with one slider, I went from that photo to that photo. You can see how the warm tones in the building are really starting to pop. So all I'm saying is be very careful, especially if you use this to a high degree and then want to go impact color. Just be careful. You might highly saturate your image without intending to. 
Uh, there's also Sky Enhancer, which acts like a polarizer and helps kind of add a little bit of contrast to that sky. I'm gonna hit reset. Structure AI is very powerful. It's also human aware, so you can apply structure, which is a little bit of crunchiness. Let me just drag this to the right. You can see what's happening to all the texture and the detail in the photo. It's really starting to pop, but you can use it on a portrait without impacting the look of the skin, which is fantastic. Boost, of course, adds additional effect to that and really pumps it up. Now, the other thing you can do, of course, is go to the left, and I do that a lot with skies and water. You can see how it softens up the structure there and really creates a little bit more dreamy image. It gives you a lot of flexibility to go left or right. And keep in mind, and I'm gonna do a video about this separately, but with each of these tools, except for light, you can come in and actually get into masking and apply them selectively in the photo so that they appear only where you want them to appear. Again, that'll be a separate video because it is gonna require a little bit of time to kind of go through the options there and dig into them. Next is color and you have saturation and vibrance. And as the name implies, the first slider saturation, it bumps up the saturation across the entire image. It's non-discriminant or whatever indiscriminate. It just pumps up all the colors. Vibrance, I tend to use a little bit more. For me, it tends to pop some of the colors that are less dominant. You can see as I'm dragging it, the warm tones are getting warmer, but not to the same degree as they do when I drag the saturation slider. So I recommend just experimenting with that on any image. And because there are so many powerful color tools in Luminar, if you use this and then also use something in landscape and some things on the pro tool and some things on the creative tool, you may get a very saturated image very quick. So just be careful. Remove color cast helps you take out something. If there's a significant color cast to your image, that helps you remove it. And then HSL is basically a drop down for hue, saturation, and luminance. I'm gonna start with hue. And because there's a lot of orange here, I'm just gonna take this orange and drag it. And you can see the orange in the building as I go to the right, it's becoming more green. As I go to the left, it's becoming more red. Now, neither one of those look good, but as you can see, it allows you to impact how colors look in your photo and gives you a lot of control over them. As I drop to saturation, increase or decrease the saturation of that component. And as I drop down to luminance, that's the light value or the exposure. So as I drag that to the right, the building is getting brighter because I'm on orange and it's getting darker. So again, fine tune control over your photo and the colors within it. That's what the color sliders do. Black and white, lots of power here. I'm becoming a bigger and bigger fan of black and white photos despite my love for big colors. But to turn it on, you basically just click convert to black and white and it's converted. Now you've got a luminance and a saturation tab here. So luminance, I'm gonna go into these reds and drop them. So if I drop that luminance, you can see that building is getting darker because that's kind of the orangey red. I'm gonna do yellow as well. You can see what's happening. And yet for blue, I might bump up the luminance and you can see the sky is getting brighter. This is a way, for lack of a better word, I just hit reset for the whole thing. I'm gonna to convert to black and white again. This is a way by sliding the luminance sliders for the various colors to create more contrast and interest and moodiness in a monochrome photo. I've actually done a video about monochromes and I'll come back and do more because I do like it. I recommend that experiment with the different color sliders here in the luminance tab and then also in saturation. If you wanted to kind of bring back and do a little bit of a selective color look or desaturated look, you could do that. Or if you wanna set those back to zero, you could just pull up the blue and saturate that. Again, lots of different creative options here. I recommend experimenting with it and see what works best for your photos. Okay, details and sharpening. Small, medium, and large, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see this a little bit better. You can look at the front of the building, and as I drag the small details, you can kind of see how that is crunching up the photo. Now I'm gonna reset that. I'm gonna drag medium details. You can see how that's going, and then large details. You can see that as well. Sharpening will help, as the name implies. Sharpen it kind of I think of it as kind of some edge contour and it just creates a nice little bit of crispness in the photo. I will use sharpening sparingly and I will use small, medium, and large details sparingly as well. And speaking of sparingly, let me get back to reset. I use small details very sparingly because if you drag it to the right, it can get really crunchy and kind of over the top. Whereas I feel like the medium details and the large details don't show as much crunchiness and therefore look a little bit more natural. Now that's dragged to an 80, so I recommend doing something, you know, maybe 15 or 20 and pretty low on small and then pretty low on sharpening. And you can get something that looks pretty nice. And as I fit to screen, 
It just crisps up the photo, gives it a little bit of edge contrast and crispiness, and I think that looks pretty good. Again, season to taste, just like everything. And of course, every photo is different, so just experiment. There's some additional detail sliders for detail masking and sharpening masking. I'll get to that in future videos as well. Okay, noise reduction. There is noise reduction built in. You basically have luminosity and color denoise. Now, luminosity or luminance noise is colorless, whereas the color denoise, as the name implies, are those multicolored splotches you might see. There's really no noise in this image. This was shot at a low ISO and decent light on a tripod. So not really a great example of how to demo denoise. And I'll come back and talk about denoising in a future video. But you do also have some advanced settings here to boost that if you want to increase the amount of noise reduction occurring in your photo. I think it works well, but depending on the image, I might would go to another tool if there's a highly noisy image that I really need to refine. Okay, landscape, you've got dehaze, as the name implies, that's taking out some of that atmospheric haze, and it does, as you can see, impact color and create a little bit more contrast in your, in your image. Golden hour, as the name implies, it creates that warm tone, and it takes the warm tones that are in your image and really pops them. I use that quite a bit at sunset. I think it adds a great warm glow overall to those images that already have some warmth in them. And then foliage enhancer, don't really have any foliage here, but it allows you to pump that up as well. So you can increase the greens, for example, in a landscape photo, and you can adjust in the advanced settings the hue of that foliage. And last but not least, vignette, something I use on quite a few photos. You've got the amount slider and the size. So the amount is how tight do you want that vignette. Something like that is really tight, whereas you go the other way, you start to create that white edge. I always go to the left if I use one, and then the size is further refining the tightness. So I can say amount and size. You can see that I've got a lot, the amount, which is heavy darkness on the edges, and the size is a really tight crop to it, for lack of a better word. Crop's the wrong word, but you know what I mean. Speaking of crop, down here you've got post-crop or pre-crop. I always choose post-crop roundness. This is easy. Now that I've got it like that, you can create a rounder vignette or more of a kind of a rectangular vignette. And feathering is just softening that transition from the center where the vignette is not impacting to the edges. Whereas if I go the other way with feathering, I get a firm fixed edge. So basically there's no transition from light to dark. And then inner light, of course, just brightens up the center of the photo. So I tend to go fairly high on feathering and I tend to go less round and I'll never go that much amount or that size. Basically, every photo is different. I just recommend experimenting a little bit, but you can get a nice looking vignette. That's probably a little too much, maybe a little bit less. Something like that is a nice soft look to it, and if you turn that off, there's the before and there's the after. It's just a great way to add a little bit extra drama to your photo. Vignette is something that I typically do at the very end of my editing, pretty much after I've done everything else. So I'll go through the Essentials tab, maybe go to Creative, maybe get, go to Pro on a photo like this, and then come back and do Vignette at the end. That's my personal preference and how I like to do it. Feel free to choose your own path in your editing. That, my friends, is my outline overview video of the Essentials tab and how to edit your photos in Luminar AI. I'll be back with the next episode in this series in which I'll be tackling the next tab, which is Creative. So thanks for watching. Check out my playlist there if you haven't yet, and I'll see you real soon, my friends. Take care of yourselves out there, and adios.